Okay. Cool. Yep, we are started and we are live. <laughs> okay, we are live. Hi everyone, it's Christy and I'm with Mallory. She's holding the camera for me right now. <laughs> In the test gardens um, on our Friday live. We start a little bit later this morning. Um, of course with the winter, you know, the days are shorter and so we're always trying to figure out what's the right time of day so that we've got sun and you guys can see what we're doing. But um, we have not been live for a few weeks because of the holidays. So welcome to 2021. We hope your holiday season was great. Um, hope you had some time to just kind of recharge, refuel, relax, all of that, and um, ready for the, the new year. Um, crazy world that we are living in right now, and it's just wonderful to be out here in the garden um, just to kind of um, recuperate and recharge. And I wanted to, um, today, gonna talk to you about a number of things. Um, I wanna talk to you about our exciting smoothie challenge that's coming up and talk about that. I'm gonna talk about some surveys we love to do with you guys. We're gonna talk about winter months and the difference. What is going on that's really different right now than what you'll see in spring. And for some of you that are brand new at this, um, it, there, it, this is dramatically different than spring, <laughs> spring gardening. So it's kind of exciting to kind of get up to speed now and um, so you're ready to go when spring happens. Um, we're we'll talking about that, then we're we'll talking a little bit about microgreens because in the um, Facebook community, we're getting a lot of questions about microgreens, and so we want to talk about that. So, um, first thing, smoothie challenge. On Sunday, we are doing a seven-day smoothie challenge um, to kick off the year and to things are flying on me <laughs> from the trees above. <laughs> it feels like it's snowing, um, but we are starting our seven-day smoothie challenge on Sunday. And um, check your email. We sent an email with a shopping list of all the different ingredients um, that are just good to have in your pantry, in your freezer at any time, refrigerator, so that you can make smoothies. And we're gonna be doing this with our Chocho protein powder. That was the individual, the guy that we talked with last month, who's doing amazing regenerative farming um, with the Chocho bean. And that is actually a pea pro, it's really a plant protein that is an amazing superfood. So, um, we're going to be doing all our smoothies with that protein powder, and um, and that's important. So that's good. So we'll be setting out recipes and all of that. The idea is we're going to be taking leafy greens that you're growing on your wall or in your containers, and we're going to be adding those to a lot of other things. So that's coming. So that's exciting. I mean, every month we want to do a, a challenge like this, so getting you guys used to just using your leafy greens and your herbs in the food that you grow so that you're actually benefiting. So that's awesome. And then the other thing is we're going to be sending out a survey um, in our weekly email. Just know that we're going to be giving you an update on that. But we want to get some feedback from you guys on um, how things are going so far. So um, we, we have a look out for that. Okay, let's talk about winter and what's going on. And I hope you guys can hear me because there is a blower <laughs> in the in the, um, in the location next to us. But okay, let, I want to talk first about winter and really what it's like. And the big thing that I want to talk about is really the temperatures, shorter days, and watering. Let's start with watering because watering is very, very different in the winter. Um, the big thing for everybody is things just slow down in the winter, okay? And, and please know that, and this is all about kind of peace and patience right now. And so, um, it's and that's okay these things are you know some of these plants sort of I mean as you guys know a lot of plants hibernate in the summer I mean animals hibernate and a lot of plants kind of go dormant our food that we're growing right now it's, it's not dormant it's just growing slow and when you water and you over water in the winter you are actually slowing that growth more and that's really important to know and um, I'm gonna have Mallory spend, because she's done some great research on this, I want her to kind of spend just a few minutes explaining what is going on when you overwater. Yeah. And um, let's show this as a great example, this yep. sage. So Mallory, you want to talk a little bit about that in terms of why the sage has a lot of growth and it's good, but look at what, what's starting to happen. Yes, totally. So ox I mean, soil should have about 25% oxygen in here. And naturally that's where it starts out. But if you start to add too much water to your plants, the soil is going to stay super saturated and wet, and there's not going to be oxygen for the roots to absorb, and it's going to actually make it so the plant cannot absorb the nutrients that's in the soil. So these leaves here start to turn yellow. They're turning yellow because it's taking nutrients from the actual foliage itself, itself rather than the soil and it's bringing that nutrients and energy up to the new growth so that it can perform properly. 
It's almost like a survival mechanism. Should I, um, so I, it's funny because normally you think you take that off, but it's almost like I don't think I want to because yeah. it's actually using Exactly. Right okay, so I'd recommend, yep, I'd recommend leaving that on. You can take it off if it's, if it's really bothering the look of things in your, your mind. But I would just recommend leaving that on there and letting it dry out completely. Maybe even put it onto a really bright table or sun. sun. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Take it off the wall or separate it from your plant so that there's air circulating around the whole pot and leave it in a super sunny location for about one or two days and let that soil dry out and maybe even give it some um, fertilizer after you start to see it recoup. But honestly, I think once we let this guy dry out, it's going to grow even better than it would have initially. So perfect. And yep. this is the case also with this yep. one where this one, this is a newer plant. Okay. Hi everybody. Thank you guys for being patient. We completely lost our internet connection. And so we're back. We moved um, actually into, into my office. <laughs> so, um, we want to show you, we, um, you know, we talked about, we showed you the sage and what was going on there. Yeah. And that, that is a wonderful, um, that is something new, Mallory, that I did yeah. not know about when the leaves yellow. It's, it's actually your automatic reaction is, oh, let's just take those off, they're dead. Mm -hmm. but actually, the plant is using that nutrition. And so if you can keep it on, keep it on. Totally. And let, that, let those, wall, um, those plants dry out. Exactly. So now, um, you know, I have a lot of my pots on the wall. And so for people that are that do have the planted wall, um, you know, at this point in time in winter, I would turn off your timers. Don't, um, do not, you should not be watering. Like right now, especially with the rains and stuff, I'm watering maybe once a week and sometimes every 10 days because it's just, you know, it's, it's wet, it's colder, things are not um, drying out as fast. And so you just really want to be observing that. And something that we always notice too in our test gardens is that some plants, you know, they just have, they're maybe they have a more established root section, so that pot dries out faster than other pots. And so you kind, you need to kind of watch it, especially in the winter months when you've got all this variability going on. Um, so that's important. Um, so now one thing too, before we get into microgreens, I just want to show you because I think it's so interesting. Now I take here is a bok choy that was planted back there in November, and this thing is nice and happy, and I'm just starting to. Harvest it. I could have harvested earlier, but I just didn't yet. But what I noticed, I put it in our in the planted wall um, because I, you know, it's I do that because it's easier to hold a lot of the pots that way. But what's interesting is look at this. There's a lot of root growth, and this is what I love about these pots is that they don't the plants don't get root bound as much because it just kind of grows through the felt structure. Exactly. And when it's in the wall and it's in that um, plastic pot that it's sitting in, it's protected and the water flows through. Exactly. And it's just kind of feeding those roots. Here's one that's um, been around longer, and look at look at these roots. <laughs> I know, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I didn't even know it was happening until I pulled it out totally. of the wall. Well, so, I do want to make yeah. a little comment here. When yeah. Whenever you're planting, typically you'll plant in, like, say, a terracotta pot or a plastic pot, but these felt pots that we use are wonderful because instead of the roots hitting the bottom of the pot and starting to circle around getting root bound, as, as she said, it's actually going to continue to grow through the felt and just be, um, it's just make it so that the life, lifespan can just go for a longer period of time rather than just going to the base of the pot and circling around just strangling itself so and what's good about that too is when you do replenish that like for instance i probably could just harvest this all together i mean i could either you take as i've been doing on this one take the outer leaves yeah. Or I could just harvest this whole thing, plant a new seedling. And what's really nice is all that root material, that's organic material yeah. for the next plant that's coming in, right? And so it's kind of helping to regenerate that soil. You know, you're going to be putting in some new fertilizer mix and nitrogen in there. And you've got things happening with that. They're going to break down those nematodes and all of the microbes in the soil. It's going to break down that those roots that are already there from the prior plant. So it's just a wonderful... Uh, you know, life cycle kind of really life. yeah yeah mm -hmm. exactly so that so i wanted to show you guys that um this is an arugula that was planted in november mid-november so kind of right about the time you guys probably would have planted for planted box and if, if you guys remember a few weeks ago mallory showed us how to take the multi-seed and thin it out and you can see here we there's not too many i mean i'm counting one two three four main seedlings in there now and these um, used to be so small, and now yeah, look at how thick those robust stems are coming Isn't out of the soil. Yeah. And I think that if you know, if we had not, if we had not seeded that out, taken some of those out, 
these leaves would be smaller. Correct. And there'd just be there'd be more of it, but they'd be smaller. And so mm -hmm. what's interesting is like one leaf equals maybe three of the smaller ones. Yeah. So it's just kind of really what you want. It's kind totally. of how you think about it. There's no right yeah. or wrong. Yeah, and especially with arugula, if you let it be larger like so and create larger leaves, I think it ends up being a little bit more spicy. So if you yes. like arugula but you do not want it to be too spicy, you could just leave it with all those little seedlings in there. But I personally think it's kind of nice to let them grow larger so that when you cook them, they don't lose all that flavor in there. <laughs> exactly. And another thing about the flavor, too, since, you know, this has been in there since November, we're go going into um, January. Typically, um, especially if it was in your peak growing months, which is basically kind of April through October, um, you would probably be replenishing it. Like every two months, you'd be replenishing that plant because you will have, it will be growing so much, you're harvesting it a lot. Um, I could be right now, I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, nothing is going to seed here, it's fine, but I might um, end up harvesting all of this and putting a new seedling in there because it's been a few months and it's ready for, if I wanted to, I don't have to. Um, so I'm gonna let it keep growing just like you guys are. Um, so, so that's that one. This other one I wanted to show, which is interesting is, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing about the, the arugula is what people will notice um, if you notice it's starting to be more bitter like you know bitter than you, you know like initially it was that's also a sign that it's getting you know it's probably getting past its prime so usually when the when your leafy greens or your lettuces start losing their taste and it typically is they get really bitter especially like the lettuces and stuff mm -hmm. um, that's a, that's a sign of um, okay I'm bitter I need to take it out and replenish that plant because it's 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 done it's kind of how to think about it and what's funny is in the summer and the warmer months it tells you that by going to seed and growing up but I noticed in the winter months it doesn't normally do that as much just the taste changes. it just starts to taste funny and it'll start to really slowly grow it's just got yeah. not, not it's much like, left going right, for it like stunted in time. yes exactly yes, yes. <laughs> now this is cool this is I if you guys remember this is one where we were kind of showing you hey you can maybe plant two if you wanted in one pot this is your viola and this is your mint, and look at all that great new growth. Coming Looks with beautiful. Yes. Yeah, so these are actually yeah. something called rhizomes, which are roots that grow horizontally under the soil, and then they pop out. So there's so many little rhizomes popping out of here. If you were to plant this in your ground, oh my gosh, it would take over your take whole over. yard. Mint takes over. That's why <laughs> mint is so good to put in a container. Because yes. if anybody's ever done that, oh my gosh, I've had that before. Where like I had mint next to uh, some grass and it literally started growing into the grass mm -hmm. taking over so you usually want your mint in a, in a, container. In a little container like this but these cute little flowers will continue to pop out until yes. that mint just overtakes that whole pot <laughs> right, right. yeah exactly exactly and this is now your viola is an, is a, an annual yes okay? correct. An annual basically means that you know it kind of it's a seasonal plant right and so and so it won't last through the seasons a viola is a wonderful cool season um, annual and that's why you probably see, you see a lot of these and it's wonderful that you actually can eat them which is which is great and um so but its root structure really won't get that big yeah. so that's why a lot of times they're called cover crops that you kind of you put them in there for decoration <laughs> in the winter when things aren't growing so so fast exactly so, there we go so that's one and then i think the last thing we want to talk about um is really uh microgreens because mm -hmm. we have a lot of questions about that and, um, and different people are noticing different germination um, rates. And what we mean by germination is basically those microgreen seeds sprouting. That's the other germinating. They're sprouting, letting out their little baby leaves, and they start to grow. And what we've noticed in the um, Facebook community, some people are like, oh, my God, it's taking so long. And one thing to know, you guys, that might help a little bit with that is that temperature matters. So if you are, if you've got your uh, microgreen, you know, um, pot, outside and it's real cold it's going to take a long time for that to germinate so a best practice would be what you want to do is you know you soak your seeds you put them in your pot you cover it with the wet damp paper towel you know in the dark and you do that inside you know I typically in a pantry in a closet you know like I just put it in a dark place until you start till you see things you know the seeds kind of sprout a little bit yep. and then bring it out and then I typically don't like, you know, because it's getting pretty cold outside, I just put it by a very bright window mm -hmm. is what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not putting it outside. And then, you know, I will, but I do notice it slows down the growth if it's Correct. outside where it's really cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so microgreens, as long as you're giving them a lot of light, ideally you'd have a grow light on it, but if you just have a really bright window, microgreens can, can handle that. Yeah, 
or even like now if you see the sunlight shining on this bok choy coming through the leaves something even like that coming through a window is perfect but it's out there exactly exactly and um and this one this is you know i'm it's done <laughs> it's, it's, it's so i need to i'm going to plant some new ones but one thing that mallory talks about which is important is we want to take uh, we basically want to dump out the soil and we just kind of right we want to just spread it out let it dry out right because right. Um, what what we're noticing with a lot of people and this is this is a common thing with microgreens is um, you know mold can appear if you're over watering it um, literally you know if you have a mister once it's sprouted and growing you know you missed it you don't want to put it underneath the sink because it's it's too much it's a small area the felt bag is good in terms of the summer when yeah. you're trying to keep the soil moister mm -hmm. but this time of year that's too much water yeah. so literally if i don't have a mister what i do is i get hand i get water in my hand and i just drip it yep. i just kind of go like that or what i may even recommend is if you get like a small bowl or plate you can fill up that bowl or plate with water and then put that the pot right on top of the water so that the roots are actually absorbing from the bottom up and that will actually encourage more growth too since the water is down at the bottom it makes the roots have to go deeper creating a stronger plant so there's different options like i said maybe you don't want to have a little bowl of water lying around <laughs> that's so great, that's a great idea that is a great idea because it's felt you can yep. do that because it's felt it's going to absorb the water correct so that's really that's a really good idea um, and do you notice here too, this was, um, I, you know, kind of a best practice. We're, we're rolling this down mm -hmm. because you don't need a lot of soil. Nope. Okay. It's pretty, you know, you know, pretty a small amount of soil is really all you need. It just, the roots need something to hold on to. Correct. Um, so, I mean, some people actually, I've seen it online where people will try to grow them like in a damp paper towel. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Which is so the fibers of the paper towel is growing mm -hmm. through because all the nutrients are in that seed that yeah. it needs to grow. So, um. So that's one thing. But yeah, so basically I'm gonna let this kind of dry out again. I'm going to, um, you know, I'm pr I'll probably put this in my worm bin, um, this, these roots here. These, this yeah. top section yeah, here. Part, and yeah. you may, I mean, depending on how long this was growing and in certain environments, you may have super thick, thick roots. Like I would recommend taking this, this out. Part, exactly. um, just because yeah. the microgreens aren't going to be in the pot for as long. So this material here doesn't have time to break down. So if you just use this nice fresh soil here at least one more time, that'll be perfect for microgreens. Great, great point. I, I love that you just said that. Thank you. Because that is true, you guys. Microgreens are quick, right? They're, you know, at the most 30 days. And so it, there's just not the time for it to break down. That's a wonderful point. Thank you for saying that, Mallory. And um, the other thing was the mold. So make sure that you're not confusing the root hairs that are coming out of the root with mold because sometimes it looks dissimilar. And what you can do is you can kind of just run water through that and if that fibrous um, kind of white material kind of goes away, that means it's roots. But if it doesn't, then it is mold. And that that, it, that can be common for with overwatering, especially for microgreens. And so what you'll want to do is you'll want to like, you know, especially if it's an isolated area, you just kind of want to remove that. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it will be fine. But if it's kind of spread through, you probably want to kind of start over. But, but you, you haven't done anything wrong. I mean, just basically it's overwatering or it's maybe an overly humid environment that mm -hmm. it's in. And so it, it happens. And that's one thing, that's kind of our, our final um, note I want to say to everybody is, guys, patience in the winter. And these are living, living, you know, new, um, plants we're, we're dealing with. And so things happen, right? And, and that's okay. And that's part of the learning process. If you would only know, <laughs> like the things that happened to us. I mean, you guys saw the sage earlier. I mean, things happen, and you learn from that, and then you start again, or, yep. or you learn how to work through that challenge. Totally. So that's the fun part of gardening. Yep, all things yeah. are lessons, and just come to us if something goes wrong. We will help you guys. Maybe even get your replacement or something like yes. that. <laughs> so just, exactly. Every month we're going to get new stuff, so yep. so no worries on that. But thanks again, you guys, for um, chiming in, and please. Post your questions, um, keep them coming, keep posting what you're doing. Love that some of you guys are starting to post some of the recipes you're making with the food. So this is a community where we're learning from each other. So wonderful. Have a great weekend and cannot wait to see you guys next week for our smoothie challenge. Mm -hmm.